Hey gang, Rod at East Coast Lumberjack. Welcome to my channel. And today, <laughs> we're going to cover a hot topic. This is all about how to keep my axes from corroding. Okay, from getting rust. From, from getting them looking like this. Okay, you, you, which you don't want. Now, I'm going to go over a, a bunch of different things. And the first thing I'll say is, I don't have uh, shares in any of these companies. <laughs> Absolutely none. And you know what? Use whatever you like. Okay? If, if you've used something for years, it works good, have at it. However, what I want to do is tell you, after almost, almost 36 years now of uh, cutting wood, chopping wood, and swinging beautiful axes for years and storing them and looking after them and using them in racing and chopping different woods and how they how free they are i'm going to share with you what i've learned okay so this is my personal experience but i have a bit of it <laughs> big shout out to natalie and uh and mark down in uh cape cod i hear you guys watch these a fair bit so uh good to have you along and uh, congrats on Nick. You had a great kid, man. Awesome. You got you got two great kids there. Anyhow, when you're store, okay. First of all, my this is my first love. <laughs> okay. Full disclosure, the smell of white pine pitch and WD-40 takes me back to my early days competing and I don't know what it is it is just it's it's one of those odors you smell it and you go ah just like just like flowers in spring or lilacs whatever everybody has their sense that brings them back memories this brings me back awesome memories of competing of chopping white pine um, however I've learned a little bit about using WD and, and actually, the first place I really learned about WD-40 was I used to spray it on my bike chains when we were younger. And uh, WD-40's been around forever. Actually, look it up online. It's useful for a lot of things, <laughs> which is really neat. Um, but WD-40 used to spray it on my bike chains. Why? Because, of course, we always think it's a lubricant. So we spray it on our bike chains, and after a bit, it's, your bike is squeaking like the devil. Your chain can hardly bend, and you're going, what's going on? <laughs> Well, it's because even though there is oil in WD, there's not a lot of it, okay? So there's not a lot of lubrication. It's a, it's a penetrant, but as far as lubricating goes, it may work a little bit. And i tell you where we've learned this, is when we store our axes. And again, you've all, you've, you've all seen our axes. You know, we swing, we swing beautiful axes. And if you've ever put these things away, and this just happened a couple of weeks ago. The University of New Brunswick Wisdom's team put their axes, they stored it out of, they used to usually store them in a very dry room. They moved them, okay, into another spot, and they, they sprayed them. And when they pulled them out, they're pitted. Now, I want to tell you something. When you get pitting out here along the edge of your axe and pitting in the face of the axe, it corrodes into the metal, okay? You just don't wipe it off, <laughs> okay? So when this happens to us, on an $800 axe, okay, and again, nothing against, you know, if you're using an old Walters or something like that, no no problem, but but this is a big deal to lumberjack competitors, okay, professional competitors that are spending $800 to $1,000 on a racing axe that's going to make or break their season, this is quite important, okay, so so that's where I'm coming from, it's not, I'm not, I'm not just a weekend warrior <laughs> telling you what I think about these products, okay, I, I will hopefully save you a lot of headache and a lot of heartache. Because when you pull an axe like that out of your box and it's pitted, it's corroded, you, you cry. Like you literally cry, you do. Because your your axe is, is almost ruined. Now, I'll get into how to repair that in, in a few videos down the road. But for now, a lot of times that happens because people use a product that has solvents in it. Okay, so, and again, name brands don't really matter. What you need to, what you need to know is the chemistry behind this, okay? So... Name brands don't matter. And, and again, if I'm chopping in pine, I'm using WD-40. Or if I'm sawing in pine, because it has solvents in it, which breaks down pitch. That's what makes this so awesome. Okay, so if I'm sawing a single buck in white pine, if I'm chopping with my axe in white pine, I'm using, I'm grabbing WD. I'm buying it. I'm using it. It works phenomenal because it cuts the pitch with its solvents. 
okay? However, the problem is it evaporates quickly and those solvents will actually corrode. So, and I've seen a lot of places online where guys are saying, oh, store your axes in, in WD. No, 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 geez, whatever you do, don't, don't store your axes with a product that has solvents and that will dissolve and cause rust, okay? Now, they'll tell you, WD will tell you right off the bat, you know, there's not a lot of oils in our product, so don't use it for, you know, door hinges, for example, because it, it won't last, okay? Same concept. In a door hinge, you want three-in-one one oil. Or, a, you know, motor oil, whatever. An oil that has lubricating properties, okay? And it sticks and it hangs around, okay? And, and WD will tell you right off the bat, you know, hey, that's not what we're for. Like, this is a, a penetrant and, uh, you know, it, it loosens, uh, you know, tighten bolts, rusty bolts, stuff like that. That's what it's great for. And it's really awesome if you're a competitor and you're going to compete in pine. It's phenomenal for that, okay? So that's where you, all these products are good where they're supposed to be used, and that's what I'm going to help you understand. So now, in Canada, we've got this stuff here, okay? Crown. And Crown has become the leading uh, leading company as far as rust inhibitors and, and undercoating vehicles and keeping them from rusting, okay? And there's a reason for that. They've done their homework, okay? They've done a lot of research. And again, I probably should have bought shares in Crown as well as WT and everything else we're going to talk about. But I haven't. And it doesn't matter to me, okay? I'm not in this to make a million bucks. I, all, I'm, all I want to do is pass along some knowledge. Now, if you want, you can actually go online and you can print off these here. Okay. SDSs, safety data sheets. And I printed them off for all my products here, okay? This is the one for WD. These are the ones for the Crown products. And they'll help you a lot because they tell you what's actually in the product <laughs> which will help you a lot applying what is the best to use where now if if i and what i tell you what happened last summer I, we were down my daughter and i were down at a competition in new hampshire we were chopping pine so i had a, one of my good uh, chisel grind axes had a good chop in the pine i sprayed it of course i sprayed it with wd like i always do put it in my sheath and I left it there. I was chopping again in less than an hour. When I took the axe out, there was a fine film of rust all over the axe face. I couldn't believe it in an hour. And again, I panicked a little bit. <laughs> now, thankfully, when I sprayed it again, most of it wiped off. Okay, but that was the starting of corroding that fast. So, you've got to be wise if you're using these really good axes of what you're going to use on them. So I'm going to go over a few of these products. Now, the other thing that Crown's done. Now, Crown products are rust inhibitors. They're made specifically for it, okay? And they have, uh, they have a specific product uh, in them. i just got to find it here so I don't get it wrong. <laughs> I hate telling people wrong information. <laughs> um, barium sulfonate. Okay, we got barium sulfonate in, and it's one of the best things in the world for uh, for rust in inhibiting, and it creeps. Okay, so it gets in, it replaces water, and fills in those little gaps. That's why Crown works as good as it does. Okay, it's made for that. Now they have three basic products. Unfortunately, I want to show you this one because this one was really good as far as storing axe. Okay, it was their old Crown lube. Okay, oh sorry, chain lube. Okay, now it comes out as a kind of a foamy substance. It's really good. It sticks really well. So there's using your axe and then there's storing your axe. Okay, those are the two things. In using your axe, you'll use one product. In storing your axe, you're going to use something different. Okay, and that's because you, you, you want two different effects. When you're using your axe, you want something that's going to cause a, a nice slide. Okay, no friction. You want to eliminate friction. That's, that's one of the biggest things. And sometimes, like in pine, you want to cut pitch. So that's why in pine, that's bomb. Okay? But as soon as you're done, the event, do not go back to this. Do not store your equipment in this, anything. Okay? If Once you're done that event, wipe your tool. Wipe your axe. Wipe your saw. Get it dry. Then put something like this on. 
okay? Put crown, or if you're going to store it for a long time, something really simple, get the, get your, uh, in your medicine cabinet and get some Vaseline, okay? You, what you need now is you need a heavy oil, something that will cover the surface of the ax and, and not allow water to penetrate it, to get in underneath it. Okay, so for years I used Vaseline. Okay, when I stored my axes for the winter, I'd wipe them all down, make, make sure there's no moisture on them, and then I would put a nice thin coat of Vaseline all over the axe. Motor oil works good. Okay, any heavy oil that will actually seal the surface of the axe. So when you're storing an axe, you want to put a heavy oil, okay, and oil, no solvents, oil on top of the axe. And then actually back then I used to use this, the chain lube, because it was heavy. And it would stick with the axe. Okay? So when you're storing an axe, that's what you want to do. That's what will prevent pitting and uh, uh, corrosion and stuff from happening on the axe surface. And I, and I say that because, again, just recently <laughs> we've seen the result of that. And, and again, you just cry. You, you literally do. You, you get out the frying rag and you cry because you've ruined an $800 axe. And until you have that happen, you don't understand. <laughs> but I had it happen. Um... So now what I want to do is I want to talk about a little bit more about Crown because we've actually started using a lot of Crown. And Crown is a, is a sponsor of some of our events in, in Canada. And they know what they're doing when it comes to, uh, to making products to reduce corrosion. Okay, and I want to talk about them. Now, there's three different products. When they came out, and of course a lot of us lumberjacks are confused because <laughs> they've changed. This is what they make now. It's called Penetrant. Okay, crown penetrant. This is the old solution. Okay, the blue, the blue spray that was called the solution. It's now called penetrant. Okay, and it is, it is the WD-40 of the crown world. It's made. If you've got a nut that won't come off, that's rusted on there, the penetrant. It it seeps in the tiniest little places you can get, and it loosens that up. Okay, so that's what that product is for. And because it's the lightest of the three products that they now make, because they don't make the chainsaw, uh, chain lube anymore, this is the lightest one of the three, okay? And it penetrates. That's what it's made for. So it's also, if I was going to, if I was going to saw, use my, uh, a saw in, in popple or whatever, I would use penetrant because it'll actually, it's, it's uh, thinner, okay? It'll work better, okay, and for that product. But again... In pine, I would still go with WD, okay? WD will outperform this one because it has solvents, and that's what you want it to do. You want it to break down the pine pitch. So that's the thinnest product. The solution, or now it's called the penetrant. The other one that they make, and this, this is their go-to, okay? This is the old T40, okay? So for years we bought it, it was called T40. It's uh, pinkish colored is what it looks like. I'm not sure what this is now. I have to spray it, but... Uh, it's called rust protection. This is what they use in the auto industry. This is what keeps your cars from rusting. So if you're going to put anything on your axes when you're done using them, you want to spray this. Okay? This is rust inhibitor. That's what its job is. It's the old T40. Now, they make a third product. And, of course, we've always wondered. Us lumberjacks like, you know, what do I use? Which one of these ground products do I use? Well, you can actually use all of them. But in all honesty, the yellow can is the best. This one here is called multi-purpose. This is a combination of the solution and the T40. And it, this is the old uh, T32. Actually, this one here is the pink one. This one is, the other one, I can't remember now what that T40 is. But this one here is the pink one. Okay. And I think it still is. I think it still is pink. Yes, it is. Okay, it is pink. <laughs> so, it's lubricant and penetrant together. Both. Okay. So that's what it does. Now, the other thing you'll see lumberjacks do when they're competing, because we don't want our axes to slip. So there's a number of things you can do. Okay, and, and some a lot of guys use different stuff. You'll see them taking up different little tubes and stuff and using. And uh, and you know the whole idea is you want something on the surface of your axe to to take away any friction you'll get, so that the axe comes out of the wood nice and smoothly. Now, the go-to for the Cumberland Clan is STP Motor Treatment, okay? Comes in, th this is the container it comes in. You can't, you go into Canadian Tire, you can't miss it. Now, we've got it covered up because, of course, when you get into competing and they don't want competing sponsors on, on whatever, so you got to cover it up. That's the shape of the can, and we all know what it looks like. STP Motor Treatment. The, the thing is, you cannot, 
get that stuff on your fingers. <laughs> or your axe, whoosh, your axe is going, your axe is airborne, it's out of there. Because it's slippery stuff, okay? So when you use it, only get it on your axe. And don't use a ton of it, okay? And I always put it right along the edge because if it's on the edge, your first swing is gonna spread it along the face of your axe. Sometimes we've got time, I actually will just take that and actually just move it all around using this part of the of the container and just sweep it around in a circular motion around the face of my axe, just so it's covered. Now, to newbies, to new lumberjack competitors, if you use STP, you better hang on to your axe when you hit that block because it's coming out and it's coming out fast, okay? And I've seen people almost lose their axe when they hit it and they don't realize, holy cow, this STP works phenomenal because it does. It keeps the axe from sticking. That It actually gets between, it gets on the surface of, of course, your engine parts and that's what keeps them from, from uh, developing much friction. That's, that's the whole purpose of that stuff, okay? So it's made to stick. So the problem is if you get it on your hands or anything else, it gets, it gets quite sticky. Now, the other thing I want to mention is this okay now this is an axe sheath and a lot of people are getting in them marcel dupuis selling down in moncton and scotty reeds uh making some now out of leather and and this one here th this is a favorite one of, one of mine this is uh this is from uh brute forge racing axes but it is uh, okay that's that's the autograph of martin comerick now god rest his soul martin was a was just he's anybody that knows martin comerick he was the uh czech champion for years and years in steel timber sports and he was always ah, when he was on stage you know and, and uh but it's funny because he was the softest kindest gentlest guy you'd ever meet he was a really nice fella and i helped him refinish an axe once before a champion's trophy and he was so grateful he gave me the he gave me the axe he said man thanks a lot for for putting an edge on my axe and I said, hey, Martin, no, no, I just don't want that. I want a signature, you know, just because he's, he's a great guy. You know, he's, a, he's, a, he's won a couple bronze medals at Steel Timber Sports. So he was, he was quite an athlete, in all honesty, and quite a personality and a really nice guy. So this, this, this baby means a lot to me. Now, I'm missing all my other she's, so kids, <laughs> Ben and Aiden are coming after you. <laughs> because I'm missing a bunch of my she's here. This is the only one I got. And, of course, they haven't taken it because they know how much it means to me. <laughs> But I bought one for Marcel last year. I don't know where in the world it went. So somebody's got it on one of their axes. I think Ben did when he went to the Worlds last year. He needed a bunch of axe sheets to pack his axes. So I think he's got most of mine up there in his axe box. No big deal. I will get it back. Or them back. So anyways, now what I wanted to say about these is we always store our axes in these things. Okay? Now, they're made of leather. Okay? And they can absorb water. Okay? Moisture. And you may not even realize it, but if it's outside or you're at a competition and it's raining or whatever, and of course we're usually going to have that over our axes to protect them, moisture gets inside of these things. So when you put your axe in this and leave it in there for a little bit of time, it's going to cause you rust and corrosion right on the edge of the axe where you don't want it. So whatever you store your axes in, like this, if you have some kind of a sheath, it wouldn't hurt to spray a little bit of crown down in there, okay, or something. Or put some Vaseline in there or something that will keep the moisture out and not cause your axes to corrode. Because if you get corrosion on the edge of your chopping face, you're, to you're toast. you got to redo that whole axe. It's got to be reground. And, and there's a lot of work to that. Okay. So this one here has rubber along the edge of it, which is nice. So the, there's two pieces of leather and, of course, there's rubber sewn in the middle here. So that's where the edge of your axe will sit. So the good thing about that is you can't get a whole lot of moisture in there. And once you put some crown or whatever in there to replace that, you're good. So that's a little bit about the products that you're going to use to keep your axes uh, from corroding. Okay, from corrosion. So, and, and also, how, you know, what ones you use in different situations. So the guys that are saying store your axes in WD, guys, the people online that are saying that, and I know you mean well. But man, you, you need to be careful. <laughs> that stuff will cause corrosion. And, and again, it's, it's nothing, it's, it's a great product used in the right places. But it's not meant because it, it has solvents and doesn't have a lot of oils. It's not, not meant for long term storage or for, you know, where you need oil, like in a door hinge or on a bike chain. It's not meant for that stuff, okay? In those applications, you need stuff with a lot more oil, like 100%. <laughs> Something that's meant to lubricate. And not cause corrosion. So in those situations, you want to go with something else: motor oil, uh, crown. Some of these crown products, or even Vaseline. Again, 
simple, cheap, and, and the wife probably has a tub of it. That's where I got mine. <laughs> I'm bringing it back, honey. Don't worry. <laughs> but uh, it, it, you had that, okay? So, again, and the other thing is, you know, a lot, lot of us aren't millionaires. So, the easy thing to do is find something that's cheap and easy and that's effective. You, well, the biggest thing is you want it effective. And I don't mind paying a little bit more money for something if I know it's effective, okay? So Vaseline does, and again, I, I, I say that because it's worked well for me for umpteen years. I, I used that for years and years before I knew anything about all these other products. <laughs> so it's my go-to. <laughs> so anyhow, that's this week's on different, on different products. Actually, I'll probably hold this one up and this one up, okay? So, because I never know what this YouTube stuff's going to actually grab <laughs> and put up for a, for a whatever. So you know what we're talking about. But that's, that's East Coast Lumberjack's take on what to do to store axes, to look after your axes to prevent corrosion. Now, the other thing I'll mention, because somebody, somebody just posted on one of my old videos this morning. Oh, uh, you know, I put my... I put my axe or my hammer or whatever in a bucket of water. So when your axe head or your whatever the head is that's on your handle gets loose, the quickest and easiest solution, people stick it in a bucket of water, it absorbs moisture and it tightens the head. Okay? That's where all this stuff comes in handy. When that moisture gets absorbed in the uh, when it gets absorbed into the into the wood of your handle, it's gonna go up inside the the head. Okay, the hammerhead, the axe head, whatever. And now you have moisture in where you can't get this stuff at it. Okay, and it's going to sit there. And if you don't address that, even if you if you, if you, you go and you actually take your wedge out and put a new wedge in, you haven't addressed the moisture that's inside between the wood and the metal. It's going to cause that axe head to corrode. Okay, it's going to do that. Now, you might get some penetrant. You might get some penetrant like that to get in there and save a little bit of that, okay? And hopefully you do, but it's, you, you need to take care. If, if we're in a, enough of a hurry that we want the hammer head or the axe head or whatever tightened so we can use it quickly, we're likely so busy, we're not going to go back and fix that, okay? And, and that's the problem. You get in the habit of it, and that's why I always say don't do that, guys. Because you are, you are adding the, the worst enemy to corroding that you can, which is water. You're putting it directly on the tool, okay? And it's creeping in, and it's sitting there, so it's creeping in everywhere. So you're going, like, you're just, you're playing with fire. <laughs> when you play with fire, guess what? You get burnt. <laughs> so just to save us a little bit of headache, okay? Do, watch my video I put up here a while ago about how to tighten axe heads, okay, when they get loose. That's what you need to do, okay? Do not. East Coast, just like Bark doesn't lie, East Coast Lumberjack does not put any tool in water. <laughs> it's a huge no-no, okay? And I know it might be quick, it might be this way. Guys, don't do it. Don't get in the habit of doing it, okay? Because you're, you're playing with the exact fire that we're trying to control and keep from ruining our gear, okay? So that's my advice this week from East Coast Lumberjack. So uh, take that. Home, put it in your, put it underneath your ball cap. It's, it's good stuff. It's good information. So uh, keep it and use it. And again, if you have, if you have another product that works really well, not, oh yeah, the other thing, jeez, thank heavens I remember this. Um, and and so <laughs> I'll put a statement up. Wait to the end because there's really good information at the end. Linseed oil. It has oil in the name. It must be good to put on axes. And is it good? Maybe yes, maybe no. <laughs> but I want to answer that for you, okay? Now, linseed oil is an oil, okay? It's a boiled oil. And it's we put it on axe handles because it seals it well, okay? It keeps moisture out. So, you know, it, it, all off the bat, it sounds like it's doing all the things that we want it to do. If we put that, if we coat our axe head with that, it will keep moisture out, which is a good thing. However, how it works, it dries, and that creates a coating. Now, if you take that axe out and you go chopping with it, you're going to realize, hey, man, <laughs> this linseed oil is causing my axe to stick because <laughs> it will. Okay, it creates a film. So the problem 
with, with linseed oil is, the next time you go to use it, you almost really need to take that coating off and then use some other lubricant that's meant to cause no friction and use that before you use your axe. If you put linseed oil on it and you chop a wood a little bit, and of course the other thing that happens is when you're chopping woods, you'll get resin on the surface of your axe, okay, and it dries, and you can see it, it looks brown. Same thing when you use linseed oil, it does the same thing. You have to use a solvent like this to get rid of that, something that will eat it away, okay, and sometimes you can use really fine um, steel wool, um, stuff like that to get rid of that that little film, okay, the film that's on there, either by uh, resins and tannins that are in the wood, um, it could be from, you know, dried linseed oil, whatever you've put on there that actually causes a little bit of coating, it's going to burn. When the axe goes in there and you get that friction and that heat and that pressure, it causes a, a thin film to, to build on it and it causes the axe to stick a lot, okay. So, linseed oil, and again, it, it, it's not bad to store your, I recommend these products because that's what they're made for. Linseed oil is not bad, but when you get it out, the last thing you're going to think about is getting that off, okay? And then all of a sudden, you're going to have that, you're going to, it's going to take you some time to get that off of there and, and make the axe work like it's supposed to work. So I'm glad I remembered that. <laughs> it didn't, it almost slipped my slippery mind, but we caught it. <laughs> okay, so that's the story on linseed oil. Because I, I've been reading a lot on, on different websites and different uh, channels and everything about how to how to uh, lubricate axes and keep them, store them and all that stuff, okay? And a lot of people are offering advice, but again, you got to try it and know what happens. What's in the product, what does it do, and, and what's it going to cause, okay? So I'm trying to eliminate a lot of that confusion, okay? That's my, that's my goal here today. So if I've offended you because I, I didn't pick your favorite product, well, <laughs> too bad. <laughs> Everybody's offended by everything nowadays, but it's, I'm not. I'm, it, it has nothing to do with that. Okay, I, I'm not, you know, peeing on your cornflakes on whatever that issue was. I'm just saying what does work and what doesn't work for people that have expensive axes and want to use the right products. Okay, so that's where solvents are used. That's where oils are used, and and the different oils and what and how they work and whether they dry, whether they lubricate, whether they penetrate, whatever they do. That's the 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 quick and dirty on it all. So thanks a lot for sticking with me. Uh, join us again next week. There'll be another good YouTube video on something else in the axe world. East Coast Armageck signing off.